Welcome to another episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders. I own NTX Vinyl or North Texas Vinyl, which is a uh, small chain now. I've got two locations uh, just north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, if you haven't already followed me on YouTube or on uh, Facebook or Instagram or wherever you're watching this, please do so. Really appreciate it. Um, today's topic is a good one how to properly care for your records or your record collection. This is something that comes up all the time. Um, I say this a lot. Most of this will be for um, people who are just getting started collecting. Um, but as I go through these things, and I've been collecting 20 years, um, these are really good reminders, things that I forget all the time, things that you just kind of get complacent with. Um, and so it's kind of good for me to go through these, and I think it can be valuable for people who have been collecting a long time, who, again, who just kind of start skipping steps after you've done something so many times, right? So I'm gonna talk through um, you know, the process of what you should do when you buy a record, what you should do when you play it, how you should take care of it, um, a little bit about how you can uh, take care from a cleanliness perspective. I'm not gonna go crazy on how to clean a record, that's kind of a whole nother video, um, but I am gonna to touch on that. Um, so first and foremost, um, you get a record, let's pretend we're talking about new records initially. Um, because I want to talk to um, the first level of protection, I guess. And the first level of protection when you buy a new record is obviously, in most cases, the shrink wrap, right? And so uh, this is a new release, came out recently by the Black Pumas. Um, and you'll see it's got the hype sticker, which some people really like, myself included. Sometimes they can be really cool. They can have information about um, the, uh, the release itself, maybe it's limited edition, things like that. A lot of people like to keep the shrink on specifically so they can retain the hype sticker because it looks cool and that's awesome. The other reason you should keep the shrink on is simply because it protects the jacket, right? It's just, it's, in most cases, a cardboard jacket and so the fact that you have a cellophane covering on it is obviously gonna add a layer of protection. But how do you do that? Well, and, and how do you do it and should you do it, right? So there's two trains of thought. The way I work is if it's a single LP, meaning it's a slimline jacket, it's not a gatefold, which I'll show you, I will almost always keep the shrink on. There's really no reason not to keep the shrink on because there's nothing to see. The shrink's not gonna keep you from um, getting into it and exploring the jacket more, right? So when it's a single LP, I will keep the shrink on 99% of the time. The way that I do this is very simple. I have an X-Acto knife. You could also use a box cutter. This is a little thinner of a blade, which is why I like it. I simply take the jacket and I go down this open spine here very carefully, just with the very tip of this. And you can kind of pull, pull apart while you're doing that and it'll create a pretty seamless little line for that shrink wrap to be open. And then in most cases you've got, you know, the shrink will be, you know, perforated a little bit there on the edges but you've got a pretty clean presentation there. And again, you've retained the, uh, retained the hype sticker and you've got a protective layer at all times on your record jacket. So that is, um, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it. You can also, there's, there's a trick where you can rub this against your jeans, I think, and it'll open that really, I'm not too big on that. I just use the X-Acto knife every time and very carefully slid it down the side. And that does a pretty good job. So I've got some other examples of that. Um, here's a, here's a uh, release by Grant Green, uh, a Blue Note reissue that recently came out and you can see I've still got this in the shrink. Um, and you know, again, you can see how it's open on the end there. Um, still got the hype sticker on, which is cool, especially in a case of something iconic like a Blue Note. Um, and let's see, I think I had another example just to make sure you know what I'm talking about. Here's another one by Drain Jones. And again, I just keep the shrink on. Nice hype sticker there talking about uh, the singles and limited edition red vinyl. So for me, keeping the shrink on is twofold. It's retaining the hype sticker, which is always cool because it's informative and then obviously uh, you know, protects the record. The scenarios where I don't keep the shrink on, something like this. This actually had a really, this is an album by Clutch, a double LP gatefold. It actually had a really cool sticker, uh, hype sticker, but it is a gatefold album, and I wanted to actually see the gatefold because the band puts a lot of time and effort into that, and it's a really cool presentation. So for me, I don't keep the shrink on in gatefolds. Very seldomly do I do that. If I have multiple copies of something, I may, but um, for the most part, if it's a gatefold, I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to rip the shrink off because that's how I roll. But that's up to you. You can you can also do the slit down the side on a gatefold. Um, still keep the sticker. Um, and keep the shrink intact, shrink intact, obviously you're just not gonna be able to actually open the gatefold at that point. 
that's your choice, right? But that shrink staying on the record is very important from a, uh, you know, protection standpoint, it adds that layer of protection. So let's talk about, you know, you've got your record, you've chosen, hey, I'm gonna keep the shrink on, I'm gonna, or I'm gonna take the shrink off. Either way, I think the most, one of the most important things and one of the biggest regrets, regrets I have when I started collecting years ago was simply the use of clear outer sleeves. So if you imagine that you've got a record and you're gonna own it for the course of years and it's gonna come on and off your shelf over and over, you're gonna get what's called shelf wear and that's just gonna be, you know, the cardboard of the jacket is gonna get worn down over time. There's no way around that. Um, that's just simply how it works. I can show you an example. If I pull out this copy of Song Remains the Same, you can see here it's got a little bit of corner wear, but then it's also got that um, got that kind of shelf wear there. It can also happen on this side when it's been pushed back against your shelf. So it hits the back of the shelf and then it's also rubbing against the bottom. And what you have to understand is that over time, if you're gonna play a record five, 10, 20, or hundreds of times and it's coming on and off the shelf, that wear is, um, it's, it's gonna happen. There's no real way around it other than sleeving your record. So that's my biggest regret is I didn't start sleeving my records from day one with clear outer sleeves. They're not incredibly expensive. You can usually pick them up for, you know, 20, 30 cents a piece or something. You can buy them in bulk and it gets cheaper. You can get them at most local record stores and you can buy them anywhere online. They are not all created equal, but they, for the most part, will do a good job. Some of them are a little clearer than others. Some of them are made for double LPs versus singles. So you kind of got to experiment a little bit um, to find the right out, clear outer sleeves that you like. But the point is, don't skimp on them. Get the outer sleeves, no matter how big or small your collection is. Even if you're just starting out, you've got 20 or 30 or 50 records. Start now, protect those records. I've got records in my collection now that I've owned for 20 years that I can see the wear on them and I bought them new because I didn't have sleeves on them for a couple of years when I first started collecting. I finally did that in recent years um, and I'm very thankful that I did finally. So. Uh, that's definitely a big tip is use that clear outer sleeve. So that's important. Let's talk about more sleeve talk. Let's talk about inner sleeves. Um, and there's a couple of, uh, couple of topics around this. So I've got an old copy of a, a Ray Charles record here. So let's talk about handling the record and the inner sleeve. So first of all, when you get your record, you figure out where you, you know, you're going to keep the shrink on or not. You, you put it in an outer sleeve and then you go to play the record. So let's talk about handling the record before we dive in with uh, the inner sleeves because they kind of come, go, go hand in hand, right? So you pull the record out and there's really kind of two ways you should handle a record in my opinion. Um, none of which um, contain the idea of touching the grooves. The whole key is to keep your fingers, keep your hands off of the grooves of the music, off the grooves of the record because that's where the music is period. Dust, oil, grime, dirt, whatever's on your fingers, if it gets in the grooves, it's going to affect the sound. It's going to affect the longevity of the record. So you want to avoid that. So the best way when you've got a record in an inner sleeve is to kind of pour it out, right? And if I put it like this, you kind of pour it out and you can see my thumbs touching the very edge and then my middle fingers or several of my fingers are touching the label. And so if you can see that, I'm not touching the grooves in any way, shape, or form, right? Now I can take the record and I can handle it very easily on the edges because I'm not touching the grooves. I'm touching that flat outer edge, which if you've got a 180 gram record or 200 gram record or something is a pretty substantial thick flat edge. But even on standard records like this one, which is 120 or 140 gram, um, it's pretty easy to not touch those grooves. And again, you wanna just touch the label on the center and you wanna touch the edges. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, or maybe that'll take a little practice to kind of pour that, pour it out. The other thing is you can pinch the side of the record, but you won't only want to touch the very, very, very edge because the outer kind of dead wax where there is no music, where the grooves haven't started yet, that's what you want to pinch. So if you're going to pinch a record out, you want to pinch it out just barely. You do not want to pinch it with your whole fingers. Now this is kind of a beat up record that's got a big scratch in it. So I know it's not going to play. What you don't want to do is grab a record like that. That's the last thing you want to do because if you grab it like that, immediately what's ever on your fingers is going into the grooves and is gonna affect the sound. And if you imagine over time, if you're handling a record, God forbid, like this, 
it's going to really, really drastically affect the sound because of all of the damage you're doing to it. Sometimes it's short-term damage and it can be cleaned. Sometimes you'll never get the dust or grime or grease, uh, you know, oils from your hands out of that record. So don't ever handle a record like this, bad, bad, bad. What you wanna do is only on the very tip, but really you wanna go more like this, kind of like a platter. Again, you kinda of wanna pour it out of the sleeve and hold it like a platter that's the best way to handle a record so even when you go to put it on the turntable you're going to drop it like this when you take it off the turntable you want to hold it like this and then ooh, I almost dropped it then go back into the sleeve again that's why i'm using a record that is more or less uh, garbage so that's the way to handle a record let's talk about sleeves there's a couple of style of sleeves um there's a lot of different styles of sleeve honestly this is a plain paper sleeve um, it's got the hole in the middle as you can see these can uh, they can leave paper filaments on the record sometimes new records will come out and a lot of records come in these paper sleeves you don't have to clean them right away because you can actually see a bit of dust from this paper depending on the type of paper that can be um, uh, more or less the uh, the other thing is um, this is paper and so the more you slide a record in and out of this over time again I'm not talking about the first few times you play a record but over the course of many years playing records these types of sleeves can cause scuffing um, that's called paper scuffing um, and you will see it on a lot of older vintage records because again just the act of sliding this in and out over time can actually scuff the record a little bit with that type of sleeve so I don't recommend keeping that type of sleeve for the long term. If it's a record you love and you know you cherish, I would recommend upgrading that sleeve. I haven't done it with all my records yet. It takes time. It takes, um, you know, there is an expense there. The inner sleeves, there's a cost to those as well. But what you want to upgrade to is there's a couple, I've only got a couple examples here. There's lots of different types of sleeve. This is a similar sleeve where you can see it's got the paper outer, but what this has is this poly lined or lined with a, you know, a, a nice, kind of film here so you, you can't go through the hole there but that gives the protection for the record so you, you won't get those paper sleeves uh, i'm sorry those paper scuffs on the record so that's very important and a lot of a lot of pressing plants are starting to um, move over to using just these kind of poly line sleeves which is nice because then it avoids that paper scuffing you can continue to upgrade from there and you can go to what's kind of considered more of an audiophile sleeve. This is kind of like a rice paper sleeve and it is also coated on all sides. So this is kind of the best case scenario. Mobile Fidelity, audiophile label, they also make some really nice uh, sleeves. So you can upgrade your sleeves at any time, your inner sleeves. I would, highly I would highly recommend going to something like this over time, especially if it's an album that you think is collectible or valuable. Um, you know, that's, that's depending on how far you want to go over time. I'd love to have my entire collection upgraded to these, uh, kind of nicer poly lined or, or rice paper sleeves. It's just something that's going to take time. Cause I'm not going to sit down and burn a whole weekend going through every single record. Um, nor do I want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars at once on these sleeves, but over time I, I will end up doing that. The other thing that's important when you're talking about sleeves, and this goes back to the kind of the relationship between the inner and outer sleeves, and you may have noticed one of the things that I do, um, or that I've started to do along with upgrading the sleeves, is I will put the, uh, put the jacket inside of the clear outer sleeve, and I'll actually house the record itself. And again, I'm gonna use the kind of pinch method here. I'm gonna just barely pull that out, and then I'm gonna pour it out without touching the grooves. And I've got the record in the inner sleeve behind the outer, behind the actual jacket. So you can see, here's the jacket. I don't have the record inside of the jacket. I've just got it um, on the back of the jacket, but inside the outer sleeve. So this does a couple things. First and foremost, it makes it to where I don't have to pull this jacket out over and over and over because I've got a top loading inner sleeve. So what that does is it reduces wear on the jacket because I'm not pulling this jacket in and out of the outer sleeve. I'm not setting it down. The jacket itself is never gonna really come out of this outer sleeve again, um, which is great because the less it can be exposed to my hands and to my shelves, the better. So again, so that's another kind of uh, a trick. And again, if I wanna pour the record out, it's very easy to get the record in and out to actually play the record without having to slide it in and out of the jacket to create more wear, more abrasion. So I'd highly recommend that as an option. Um, that's again, another thing I'm kind of doing over time is upgrading, um, upgrading how I kind of store the, store the albums. So we've talked about outer sleeves, we've talked about inner sleeves, talked about kind of how to handle a record. 
obviously one of the big things um, caring for record is going to be cleaning and I've got a whole bunch of kind of different supplies I can show you different options but one of the other things I think is uh, important that people um, people don't do is I get albums like this a lot that we're talking about vintage albums now or even new ones and a lot of times they'll have these kind of splits because the glue comes undone right and the jacket comes undone and over time that's just because again glue dries and is no longer sticky and that's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse, right? As the more this this record is handled and played, one of the things that I don't think I think a lot of people just leave that and consider it to be like, oh, I've got a split jacket. You don't have to do that. You can use you know a little glue pin like this, and it's got a really fine tip on it. And you can come down here. I'm not going to do it in real time, but um, you can come very easily and put a, just a little kind of strip of glue, take this, put it back in your outer sleeve, put it back on the shelf between other records where it's gonna be sandwiched between them, and you're gonna fix that very easily. So that's a pretty easy hack for vintage records because I see a lot of vintage records, especially gate folds where they have the full um, the full glue on all the, the both panels when it's, when it's kind of expanded, and uh, it's an easy way to fix that. So I would definitely recommend, don't, don't just accept that, it's an easy fix, and I think uh, it goes a long way to keeping your records intact. So that's a little hack. Now, as far as cleaning records, this is um, a wormhole to say the least. There are a plethora of different ways to clean records. You can start with free methods and you can spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on professional cleaners. I'm gonna talk you through some of the basic starter options to how to clean a record when you go to when maybe you, you require a collection and you get a record that's used and it's a little dirty how do you deal with that right so i'm going to go back to this ray charles record which as you can see is a little beat up which is why we're using it as an example um, the first thing to do when i get a vintage record and i can see it's dirty it's got a little dust i mean it's got some marks on it i'm not really sure if that's going to affect the play or if it's just visual right the first thing you can use is some simple cleaning spray this is by a brand called caillou i have no affiliation but um, it does work well there are many other brands this is one i picked up um, very simply from a local record store it come they it, they actually sell it by itself and they actually sell it in a little kit with some other different supplies which I'll walk through but this is simple all you want to do again as a starting point just to get an initial cleaning on a record is a couple spritz of this it comes with this little uh, this little cover so if you're gonna lay the record flat I'm not laying it flat now so I can show it to you but if you're gonna lay the record flat on a desk or on a record shelf you can place that over if you really want that way when you're spraying it you make sure you get no moisture over and then you're gonna take a microfiber cloth which just is a cloth that comes with that cleaning spray um, but you can buy these anywhere they you know sell them at Target Walmart whatever it may be just make sure you get the microfiber the really soft ones you don't want to have you don't want to use any type of uh, cloth or rag that has any you know, uh, texture or abrasion to it. You want to use the microfiber. And then you're simply going to wipe this down, obviously, after you, you know, a couple spritz on the record or on the towel itself. You wipe it down, you flip it over to the dry side, wipe it down again. You want to make sure and get all moisture off of there. You want to use a little bit of, uh, a little bit of pressure, obviously, depending on how dirty the record is. Um, and it may take a couple times if it's extremely dirty, but that's going to give you an initial pass to get off your initial kind of dust or dirt or grime. Um, and again, depending on the severity of how clean, this, clean or dirty the record is, that may not do the trick. But that's, again, step one, if you've got some dirty records, don't think like, oh, I need to go, I gotta go spend a whole bunch of money on a record cleaner and like figure out how to do this, what's the proper way. A little bit of record cleaning spray in a nice cloth is a great starting point just, to, just for an initial pass of a vintage record you get. Now, again, if, you, if you're gonna acquire several hundred records and they're all filthy, that's probably going to be really cumbersome and take up a lot of time doing a one by one like that. And we'll talk about another option where you can kind of dive in from there. So that's, um, that's an initial pass. The other things that you can use, um, let's see. So this is a little brush. This actually is by that same company it came in that kit. This is a little, um, kind of like a dusting brush. So this will take off anti-static and, and dust. And maybe it's not dirt, but it's just kind of surface level stuff. You can clean with one of these. Um, this is another option. This is kind of a, a, a really nice, what feels like a felt. Um, again, that's gonna be a good cleaner. You can use this along with the spray as well. 
This is an old school option here. This is one of my favorites. So this is also one of those felt pads and it actually came with cleaner, which is all out. So that's an old school in there that I've got that they used to sell that. I don't know if they make that exact model again, but again, that's going to be the same type of thing when you're cleaning, uh, just basic to get the, the, the basic grime off the record. Um, so let's talk. Oh, yeah, here's one other. This is kind of an anti-static uh, thing. This is kind of cool. Um, anti-static or like filament and dust you can actually kind of roll it around I, I bought this just to see what it was like and it i don't use it very much because i think the, the microfiber cloth does the job just as well but that's supposed to get like kind of dust and particles off so that's if you got one record that's dirty if you need to do more at a time which is um probably more efficient one of the options is to go to something like this which is uh sold by a company called vinyl style there's one called a spin clean they're essentially all the same all this is is a plastic shell it's got some brushes which i'll take one out you can see it's got these brushes which over time obviously will get filthy and need to be clean and worn out it is slid down in here and all you do is you take your record i'll try and show you take your record it comes with this little uh little device here where you slip this in the uh, slip this in the center hole and you slip this over the top and now you've got your record you can kind of hold it without touching the grooves because again that's that's key now you drop your record in and it goes right in the middle of those two brushes and I'm going to show it to you so you can see this drops right in the middle of those two brushes and now you pour your vinyl style record washer fluid again lots of different companies make this lots of brands you can buy it in bulk and it's a lot cheaper and then from there, you literally are just gonna spin your record, right? And you can hear the friction, but you can hear those brushes really cleaning and taking the grime off. And what you'll end up with at the bottom of this is a whole bunch of filthy water from all the dirt that has cleaned off the records. And then what happens is it comes with a nice little drying rack. So you can take your record, and obviously you would take the, uh, the middle spindle thing off, but then you've got the ability to stack several records in a row after you and let them dry right and then you'll want to give them probably a wipe down with a microfiber cloth make sure no moisture is left on them at the end but uh but that's a kind of simple way the the vinyl style and the spin clean those are like you know 40 50 dollars i believe um and you can pick those up at local record shops as well or you know at a big box at amazon or whatever um, but that's a pretty good way to clean let's say you know five or ten records at once if you've got a bunch that you need to go through or maybe you need to go through your collection because you've never really cleaned it and go through that's a pretty good option um from there it can get crazy you can go way up there are incredible cleaners that i think you can get a pretty good kind of automated cleaner for three four hundred dollars now and then it goes way up from there. Companies like VPI, they make cleaners that have vacuums built in. So not only does it give it a wet clean, but it also gives it a dry clean. Incredible. I haven't upgraded one of those yet. I probably need to. Um, they are um, kind of pieces of furniture in, in, um, on their own. You know, they're nice and big and you put one record in at a time and you hit start and you come back, you know, two or three minutes later, I think, and you'll have a nice clean dried record, which is amazing. But again, you're gonna pay for that, pay for that. Um, luxury but i have been told that they are well worth the money because the records um your collection the records in your collection are going to sound that much better they're going to um thrive that much longer in regards to um you know longevity and sounding good over time so that's kind of the basics i wanted to go over in regards to caring for your collection i think making sure you have um outer sleeves on them to avoid that shelf wear i think it's huge in regards to the jacket making sure you know how to handle your records properly and you're not just kind of like um, hap -hap haphazardly handling them on the grooves that's critical and having uh you know upgrading your inner sleeves um using inner sleeves first of all is a big deal and then making sure that um, you've got the proper inner sleeves that aren't kind of scuffing your records over time um you know keeping shrink wrap on i think that was important we talked about and then having a cleaning option i think is important a lot of people especially when they start out again myself included when i started out it was years before i thought i should probably get something to clean these with i've been playing them for a couple years now like start early like i say that pretty much in all of my you know tips and advice videos like mistakes i made early on this is another one it's like start cleaning your records early new records can can need a cleaning too don't don't 
don't take for granted that just because it's a new record and it's in shrink wrap, it doesn't mean it doesn't have some grime and dirt on it. It comes from a pressing plant where there's dust and dirt flying around and real humans handling these things, um, you know, pretty much every one of them. And so I'm sure, you know, they do their best to keep them clean, but a lot of times you'll pull a new record out and it needs a good bath. Um, certainly with vintage records, that's usually the case um, unless it's already been cleaned by the record store, which is something I try to do, but it's, it's, you know, it's hard when you're going through thousands of records, um, you know, a week or a month or whatever it be to, to clean every one of them. But I at least try to give it a good wipe down when I'm pricing it, um, when it's going into my shop. But, um, but yeah, so that's about it. I would love to hear more tips, more tricks in regards to how you care for your collection. This is just a few that I wanted to get out there for new collectors to get started. Or again, reminders for old collectors like myself who kind of get lazy about some of this stuff. And so it's always good when I go through the planning of one of these uh, good reminders for myself. I guarantee you the next time I get a big collection and I'll be thinking, okay, I don't, you know, uh, don't contradict yourself. Actually do what, you, practice what you preach, you know. So um, thanks again for watching. My name's G.I. Sanders with NTX Vinyl. Um, like I said at the beginning, if you haven't already followed me, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, please hit it up. Really appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching. We'll be back again soon with another episode of Talking About Records.